Hey, hey, okay. So at the beginning of this chapter, I, I made a big deal about scientific literacy and, and how, you know, a core, a core part of this course is trying to enhance all of your scientific literacies. Um, so as you went through the course um, or went through the lectures, I hope you got some sense of why. Uh, and I want to reiterate some of those points, you know, right now. Um, the... I think the first thing I would say is, you know, when it comes to science, the whole approach to trying to find the truth has been standardized um, to a certain extent, um, and and that and it's been validated as as a correct and appropriate approach to doing so. And so, people in the scientific community they learn this this research methods. Um, it's always a core part. And then when they're going about seeking truth, you know, that's what they use. Uh, and so, you become as a researcher, as a scientist, you become very sensitive to the fact that you have to do everything in very precise ways and you know you're not going to get away with it unless you do because of that peer review process I really want to you know highlight that peer review process um, there's all these ethics that are involved that you heard about and you know all how do you design a good experiment how do you do all this kind of stuff you want internal validity you want external validity you know what makes sure that you care about those things when you do your research well because you're going to have to write that research up you're going to have to describe all of those things in detail in the paper and then you're going to have three experts who are going to look at this very closely literally trying to find something you didn't do right um, so, and you have to pass, you know, you have to get those three people to ultimately say, you know what, this paper was done right. Uh, it's, it's worthy of being published. And then it goes on to a journal that, go, that ultimately publishes the paper. Okay. So what that means is that when you're interested in some issue, um, all information is not created equal. If you go to the internet and you want to learn about something um, and you just start Googling, you're going to get everything in a Google uh, search. Maybe you will get some scientific articles every now and then that were published in peer-reviewed journals. Now you perhaps know why that's so important, but quite often you're not. Um, but you'll get people who have a lot of authority associated with their name and who are arguing things in very strong ways as if, as if they know the truth. Um, and they, they may even be you know, talking about anecdotes or situations they've seen or even data they have that they've never published, um, which should be a red flag. You know, if anyone says, oh, yeah, I've got a bunch of data, you say, what journal is that published in? If they, if they say, well, it's not that means they couldn't get it published. You know, that means it wasn't done well enough for those three experts to say, yeah, it's good. Uh, and so that's the worry in the modern world. Information is so easy to get. It's everywhere. Um, and people are so emotionally driven that when, when they come across somebody arguing something in a strong emotional way, sounding very scholarly and academic, and maybe even having credentials behind their name, then they can get impressed and they can start to believe that information. So what's the antidote? What does the scientifically literate person do if they want some information? So that's what I just want to show you quickly. We got into this a little bit in office hours and I thought I sh we should bring it here too. So now that you kind of hopefully have an appreciation for the scientific process, the rigor and the accuracy of the information that it, that it yields, that's the data you want if you're interested in some issue. How do you do that? Well, you don't use Google. You use Google Scholar. Ah, I don't know. I, that's how it was in my voice I, or in my head, so I had to share. <laughs> anyway, Google Scholar. Um, let's, let's flip to Google Scholar here. Um, just click into it. So Google Scholar is a way to access um, a database of published articles, peer-reviewed published articles. So let's say if you were interested in, um, is the vaccine safe? Um, now there's, we're going to get all sorts of uh, things, um, but <laughs> like this one, influenza vaccine, safe, effective, and mistrusted. Um, but, you know, these papers will be papers that went through that scientific process. And if these are your inputs, if these are where you're starting, and this, and this could be anything, right? It could be about, I want to know about relationships. Um, what's the research that's been done on relationships? Wow, it would help if I spelt it roughly right. 
Um, and then you can find out a whole bunch of papers, you know, chap book chapters, etc., uh, related to that question. Maybe you're interested in subliminal perception. That's kind of a cool topic. Can we can we perceive things but not be aware of it? Well, you have a bunch of things. And for any one of these, by the way, this is one that's done by my um, previous supervisor. Um, is there one by me here somewhere? Um, dang. <laughs> Thing. I thought there would be. But for any one of these, you can um, go into the actual um, thing itself. Come on, Google, let's fly. So in this case, it's a PDF that it's going directly to. I thought it was anyway. Yeah, not quite. Um, okay, so purchase uh, PDF. So that's just because I don't have my, um, yeah, whatever, or I'm a proxy, U of T proxy. But normally you could get directly to the articles um, themselves and read them right here. And so this is the way to go. If there's something you're interested in psychology, uh, and, and including, by the way, if we go through the textbook and you learn about something and you go, wow, that's kind of cool. I'd like to know more about that. Here it is. And, you know, one other use that, that I'll really highlight should you at some point decide, I'd like to be involved in research, I wish I could get into a lab somewhere here at, at UT Scarborough, one of the first things I always recommend that students do is find out what sort of research people here do. Um, and so I'll use myself as an example just to, to not... Um, yeah, show somebody else. So when, when I put in my name, notice it's got a few different Jordans, um, all related to me. There's there's only every Jordan that's spelt this way is related to me. Um, but if we go into my profile here, now you're seeing the papers I publish. And especially if you go over to year and you click on that, that'll sort it by year. Now you're seeing literally the last few papers I've published. This one just came out, uh, literally. Uh, and so you're seeing some of the papers I've published. You're getting a sense of what I like to do research in and, and where my topics are now. And if you find somebody here at UTSC and, and you read their paper and you really like it, if you can then go to them and say, hey, listen, I read your paper on X. I find X absolutely fascinating myself. It was a cool paper. I have some thoughts. I had some questions. I'd love to talk to you about it a little bit. We love to talk about our research. And that is the easiest way to start a professor thinking about you as a potential research collaborator, um, somebody to do a supervised study with. So you can use Google Scholar to get to know what people are up to um, and what research they're doing and what you might find fascinating. OK, so I just wanted to leave you with some sense of, you know, how we hear people saying, oh, yeah, I, I did whatever because I did my research. If you do your research this way, if, if you're using as your input scientific papers, good on you. Then you are doing things in, the, in a scientifically literate way. If you mean I did my research, meaning I Googled a term and read whatever I came across and the stuff that emotionally impressed me, um, I thought was true, you know, that's what most people think. And that's the worrisome part uh, in a modern world where all information is just available so easily. Okay, cool. Leave that one there. Um, the, the fun thing is uh, we're now going to go on a little bit more to to chapters that are all about something. The next one will be about the brain. Um, and so they get a little more fun and juicy as we go. This is a critical one to have under your belt just to help you interpret the things that we're going to talk about next. Um, and also, by the way, we are at, in your peer scholar activity going to ask you to interact with a scientific article um, and give us a summary and, and say what you would do next as an experimenter. So this theme of, of getting scientifically literate will run through the whole course as well. Okay, cool. I will leave it there. Have a great day, everybody, and I will see you in chapter three. Bye-bye.